Hey friends, Elizabeth here from Plant Based Bride, back again with another notebook review. It's been quite a while since I've tried any new notebooks, so I'm very excited to give you all the details on this beautiful notebook from Canadian company Hemlock and Oak. If you're interested in some of my past notebook reviews, I will link the playlist in the cards and in the description box, so you can check those out after you've watched this one. For full transparency, Hemlock and Oak did send me this notebook for review, but I am not being paid for this video and all opinions are 100% my own. I thought I'd do a bit of an unboxing to start so you can see how Hemlock and Oak packages their notebooks. One of the main reasons I wanted to share this brand with all of you is one, this is a small Canadian company and I love supporting fellow Canadian small business owners, entrepreneurs, and this brand is so focused on sustainability, being eco-friendly, and I love that and want to support that as much as possible. Hemlock and Oak was started by a design and environmental enthusiast with a focus on low local Canadian production, sustainability, and aesthetic, all handled by a two-person team. They focus on clean and minimal layouts, designed in-house, shaping their products based on community feedback, incorporating post-consumer waste whenever possible, plastic-free packaging that is 100% recyclable, and more. Their incredibly admirable goal is to be zero waste in the next five years, reliant on post-consumer waste and or biodegradability for manufacturing materials. They support family-owned manufacturers within Canada so that they can form partnerships with them and ensure that the production is done in an ethical and sustainable way. Hemlock and Oak started with planners, but they just recently released their first bullet journal, so that's what I'm going to be reviewing today. Their bullet journal comes in only one size, which is A5, with pages that are 5.8 inches by 8.3 inches or 148 millimeters by 210 millimeters. While there's only one size available, there are some options. There are six colors to choose from. I decided to go with honey, which I thought was such a beautiful mustardy yellow orange in this beautiful linen fabric that has a really satisfying texture to it. The notebook also comes in a lavender linen, a green linen, a light gray linen, and two non-fabric covers that are made from 58% post-consumer waste, either in a nice deep blue color or in black. Each notebook has three ribbon bookmarks that complement the cover color, and those ribbon bookmarks are made fully from recycled plastic bottles. I love that the bookmarks are different colors so that you can remember which one is marking what. You also have an option with a paper. You can either go with a dot grid, which is what I chose, or you can go with graph paper. I'll give you more details on the paper in a little bit here, but first let's go through some more details. This bullet journal is priced at $42 Canadian, which for comparison is sitting a little bit higher than Archer and Olive, whose A5 notebooks come to around $38 Canadian with the conversion rate. Considering this is a very small company just at the start of their journey, who aren't getting any kind of a bulk benefit for materials and are producing all of their notebooks locally in Canada, it completely makes sense to me that their price point is a little bit higher, though of course not everyone can afford a $42 notebook, so so that is definitely something to keep in mind. Each bullet journal is designed with lay flat binding and is FSC certified. The bullet journal has 160 pages of 150 GSM or 100 pound paper. The paper is a nice bright white and I'll give you some comparisons so you can really see the undertone of the paper. In addition to the simple gold logo on the front, you can see on the back near the bottom says hemlock and oak. I love the simplicity of the design of this notebook. It is very classy looking and the texture and finishes feel incredibly premium. Something to keep in mind here is that these notebooks do not have an elastic closure or a back pocket. For me, this isn't a big deal, but that might be something that's really important to you. So definitely keep that in mind. Before we get to the good stuff, I just want to comment on these end papers because I love the paper that they chose. It has that handmade recycled paper feel with that natural bit of texture and variation. It's just a beautiful touch when they could have easily gone with a plain white end paper. It's really nice attention to detail. The first page when you flip that end paper is the contact page. Again, very simple and classy design, straightforward, just exactly what you need. When you flip that page over, you have a single pre-made index page. Some people will love the idea of a pre-made index. Some people will hate it. 
I like that it's just a single page, so you're not losing several pages to it if you don't personally use an index or if you'd prefer to make your own. Opposite the index, we start with page one of our dot grid pages. And as you'll notice, this notebook has a squared off cover and the pages themselves are squared off as well. You might be used to notebooks that have more of a rounded corner, so this might look and feel a bit different to you, but the dot grid itself is a standard five millimeter dot grid I measured just to be sure. And the dots are a nice light gray, still easily visible to me anyway, even without my glasses, but maybe more difficult to see for some. Dot preferences vary wildly, so you'll have to keep in mind what you prefer. I like a minimal dot that can sort of disappear into the page a little bit that I'm not constantly having my eye drawn to, but I know there's lots of people out there who really prefer a dot that really stands out from the page and is a little larger, a little darker, easier to see. The pages themselves are numbered in the lower corner, again with that nice light gray. They're quite small, and again, I prefer that they are small enough and light enough that they can kind of disappear away into the page and they're not too distracting. I wanted to do a little comparison here to help you get an idea of the color of these pages. I would classify them as bright white with a slightly warmer tone. So here I am comparing the paper to standard printer paper, which I usually try to use as a control for paper color. It's a pretty standard bright white, pretty neutral. And as you can see, the printer paper pulls just a tiny bit more pink and blue than the paper in the notebook, which pulls a little bit more yellow and green, but the difference is very subtle. I would classify them both as bright white, but again, the hemlock oak paper just leans a little bit more towards the warm side. For another comparison, I'm grabbing a notepad that I have from Archer and Olive, which has the exact same paper that they use in their notebooks. And you can see again, the Archer and Olive paper pulls a tiny bit more pink and blue versus the Hemlock and Oak paper, which pulls a little bit more yellow or green. But again, I would classify all of these as bright white. Flipping to the back of the notebook, I'm going to do a pen test as always, so we can take a look at how this paper reacts to different mediums. Again, this paper is 150 GSM, so 10 GSM less than Archer and Olive, which is my current bullet journal. So I would expect it to have a touch more ghosting, but hopefully very minimal ghosting and little to no bleed through. I also counted the number of spaces vertically and horizontally on these pages for anyone who's curious, not including the outer margin. There are 40 spaces from top to bottom and 27 spaces left to right. So I'm starting with my Secura Microns, which are my go-to fine liners. I'm using a finer nib, the 02, as well as a thicker nib, 08 for comparison. I'm also testing out a gel pen, my Pentel Hybrid Technica, a generic pen made by Poppin that I have been using recently in my bullet journal, which I believe is also a gel pen, a Sharpie permanent marker, a Stadler Triplus fine liner, a mild liner, a Tombow brush pen, an Archer and Olive acrylograph, which is a paint pen. I'm also testing the white acrylograph to see how well it matches the color of the page, because y'all know I love to use my white acrylograph as an eraser for any and all mistakes. I'm testing out the alcohol-based Copic sketch marker, which I expect to bleed along with the Sharpie permanent marker because I'm pretty sure these two have bled through every notebook paper I have ever tested. I'm also testing a couple of the gold markers I have on hand. I'm also pulling out some watercolor so I can test how this paper reacts to having water applied to it. So I'm starting off with a very wet brush and some brown watercolor paint. And then I'm also using a very wet brush in my gold watercolor to test that as well. While I wait for the watercolor to fully dry, I'm just gonna do a really quick smudge test because as y'all know, I am very impatient and I hate smudging more than almost anything in the entire world. <laughs> And to my pleasant surprise, there was almost no discernible smudging. I tested the first four pens at one second, three seconds, and five seconds. And as you can see, there is almost no smudging whatsoever on the first three pens, and only a little bit of smudging on the final pen, the Poppin pen, which is a gel pen with a thicker sort of wetter nib, but not nearly as much as I expected, even at the one second test. Now that the watercolor's dry, I wanna show you the results on the back of the page. So let's flip that page and see the back. 
As expected, the Sharpie ghosted quite a bit and started to bleed through in a couple spots. The Copic sketch marker also bled through quite a bit. As expected for an alcohol-based marker, it even bled through to the next page, and it was the only thing to do that. The next darkest ghosting we have is from the first watercolor swatch, that brown swatch. It looks like in a couple spots, it was getting close to potentially bleeding through. I think if I'd done another layer with the wet brush, it might've bled through in a couple little spots, but my gold watercolor swatch beneath it had no bleeding whatsoever and didn't look like it was close to bleeding in any area. They both wrinkled a little bit or warped a bit from the water, which is pretty standard in my experience with notebook paper that is not specifically made for watercolors. And looking at all the other pens, there's definitely a touch of ghosting. You can sort of see a bit of a hint of where the writing is through the page, but I definitely wouldn't call the ghosting extreme by any means. It's pretty subtle. I also wanted to point out that when the white acrylograph dried, it matched so well that the light had to be hitting at just the right angle for me to see it. I actually wasn't sure at first when I was writing the word acrylograph if the ink was coming out because I couldn't see it at all from the angle that I was looking at it. And I had to actually change where my head was and lean forward for the light to catch the slightly different texture for me to actually see that the letters did in fact exist. So I would say that the white acrylograph from Archer and Olive is pretty much a perfect match for this paper, about as perfect as I've seen. Now for my final thoughts on this notebook. I think that Hemlock and Oak have done an amazing job with their first bullet journal. I think it's beautiful, classy. It feels premium in my hands, the texture of the cover, the paper itself. There's an attention to detail that I really appreciate in the design choices. I don't think this bullet journal would work for everyone, but I definitely think that there's a group of people out there for whom this notebook would be perfect. And I'm definitely excited to use this notebook for something in the future. Now that I've shared my thoughts, I want to hear yours. Please let me know in the comments down below what you think of this bullet journal from Hemlock and Oak. Is it right up your alley? Is it not for you? Tell me why. I would love to know. If you don't have any specific thoughts to share, but you enjoyed the video, leave some sort of yellow emoji in the comments in honor of this beautiful cover and my nails being almost a perfect match. And if there's any other notebooks you'd like me to review, let me know in a comment down below. If you have any more questions, about this notebook, if you want me to test something for you or measure something for you, let me know and I will do my best to answer your questions. I don't have any kind of an affiliate code or a discount code with Hemlock and Oak, but I will have a link to their website in the description box. And I am pretty sure that if you join their mailing list, you can get 15% off your first purchase. So definitely make use of that if you're going to check them out. And with that, we've come to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you as always to my patrons for your support. That's a wrap on this video, and I'll see you really soon in my next one. Bye, friends.